Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha! I'm Brooke Hanna, a Hiki no student from Kauai High School. I'm Haven Luperjasso, also a Hiki no student from Kauai High School. Welcome to this special edition of Hiki no. In October of this year, Brooke, myself, and two other classmates had the honor of participating in PBS Hawaii's live town hall broadcast called Kako. Have you fact-checked your truth? The show dealt with truth in the media and throughout society. The four of us were included because of a hiki no story we had created called The Fact of You. Here's Haven explaining what the video was about. Wow, you know, the biggest production of all is kind of your own life. That's the one thing you actually have control over, in fact, and that's the one thing that we're often not truthful about, which is very ironic and seems very backwards. And so that we kind of just wanted to address that in our video, like the fact of you, be accurate with who you are. There were other Hikino students in the studio that night, and the one thing we all had in common was our commitment not only to expressing our own personal truths, but also the truths of the people we do stories about for Hikino. To illustrate this point, Haven and I will present eight Hikino stories from the recently completed round of shows that do just that. These stories were selected not only for their overall quality, but also for the ability of the storytellers to get into the hearts and minds of the people featured. Our first story explores the personal truth of a young man who won't let his disability hold him back. From Maui High School, here is I Am Able. Wow. Kajan Dakis is just like any other piano student who struggles with mastering the notes. But coordinating with the keys is not the only worry Kajan has to create that perfect piece. So Kajan was born with spina bifida. It's a birth defect where your backbone did not completely close. So anything below that is affected, in, in, in his case, including his mobility. Kajan has been using his wheelchair for most of his life. This in itself has brought him some challenges, especially during his recent transition from Pukukui Elementary to Mariwaina Intermediate in Kahului, Maui. The biggest difference is that there's, the campus is kind of bigger than my other campus. And we don't stay in one classroom, we switch every, every hour. His teachers are understanding, but there are areas where he feels left out. But when I see like other kids playing football or soccer, sometimes I feel like, oh, I, w I wonder how it feels like to um, play football or soccer. Despite being in a wheelchair, Kajan pushed himself to do what he and his family thought impossible. Sports. I never thought he would be able to play any kind of sports. Through the years, Kajan has been on a roll. He is involved in numerous sports, including tennis, surfing, wheelchair racing, and swimming. I like to do these things because it's fun and it gets me exercise. What I like about swimming is I get to meet new kids and I get to get, get along with them and I get to meet my new, my new coach. Last year, Kajan brought home a silver and a bronze medal from Special Olympics. I got them in Oahu. After keeping himself busy with school and sports, at the end of the day, Kajan will ultimately go back to his first love. My favorite is playing the ukulele. I started playing the ukulele four years ago when I was seven. He goes to parties and community events and he plays and sings for the community. Kejan is unique because he proves me wrong. He not only lives up to my expectations, but he soars above it. Even with his disability, the support Kejan has from his family, paired up with his cheerful attitude, has enabled him to pursue his numerous involvements, proving that he definitely is able. 
This is Yasha Anquillo from Maui High School for Hiki No. When a person discovers his or her truth, they often discover what purpose they serve in their community. Here's a story from Moana Lua High School on Oahu about a man who is crystal clear about his role in a small community of surfers. When I catch a wave, um, it's like a, like a drawing. When you draw it up, if you succeed and the drawing came to as, as you planned it, yeah, you feel really, really lifted. And you know that he loves surfing. It's obvious. You come up to him, or when he paddles in the water, you can just feel that. You know, when you first start surfing, it's all for yourself, catching the waves. But now, it's better to give that wave away. It makes me feel happy and uh, kind of like the, the job done, you know? In Waikiki, first-time visitors and locals look to Perry Fernandez, better known as Mooch, for their surfing needs. He does board rentals, he fixes boards. So people are always giving him supplies to fix boards. Trust me, you can come down here in your free time, you will see him with his rake in his dustpan, doing what he do, just every day. It's, uh, it gives me longevity on this earth, you know, by helping. I try to take every opportunity that I can to help. Aloha, everybody. This is Mooch, and uh, come and serve with me when you guys can. Because of Mooch's dedication to surfing and helping others, Many didn't realize his unique situation. Me and my wife, we separated, peaceful separation. And um, so I just stayed in the van and stayed at the beach. Sometimes there's no food. Sometimes you got to go to the bathroom. But um, all in all, it's OK. I mean, According to the Associated Press, Hawaii has the highest homeless rate in the nation per capita. Although which is a part of the statistic, he receives ways of help in the community. I, I give him anything I have, but he's such a uh, warm and uh, big-hearted uh, person that he's not going to ask. I appreciate it a lot, and um, I feel that it's come full circle, because what I do when helping others, then it comes around back to me. With Mooch, like, I, I help him by bringing him breakfast in the morning, but he helps me a lot um, by fixing up my boards. I've seen helping people, I want to go out there and help people as well, you know, and I feel good about it. You know, it's not what, what, what we're getting back is what we give. With his desire to create a change, Mooch will continue to push others to benefit the people. Because sometimes we all need help, you know, so if, so if everybody's helping, it's just positive, positiveness, you know, you know, the aloha and all that stuff, and it's, and it's all good, man. This is Erin Amaro from Moalo High School for Hiki No. Our next story is about a woman who discovered her truth through her lifelong commitment to an extremely demanding art form. From Kapa'a Middle School on Kauai, here is Dance Teacher. I can say that ballet has been the one theme in my life that has been so utterly consistent to Miss Jennifer Bell Gray, dance is not just a series of movements put to music. Instead, it has guided and shaped her life, and at one point was a form of healing. When I was 13, my father died in an accident suddenly, and I couldn't really express myself in, um, in talking, so dance was really my outlet for grief. Miss Belle Gray has been expressing herself through dance since the age of three, when she saw Swan Lake and instantly fell in love. Seeing the dancers move to this Tchaikovsky music in this beautiful way made me feel like a bird, made me feel like a swan. Ballet remained a dependable and stable outlet as she and her family left Kauai and moved from one country to the next. We moved to Hong Kong. I lived there for three years. After that, we moved to the northern part of Thailand for one year. And from there, we moved to England. And then at the age of 10 was when I auditioned for the Royal Ballet School. At the Royal Ballet School in London, England, Miss Belgrade danced before thousands of people, even British royalty. But after many long and painful hours in the studio, her sights began to focus on a new goal. 
There were blisters, many blisters, strained muscles, soreness, aches and pains, feeling mentally fatigued, wondering, can I really do this? Upon graduating from the Royal Ballet School, I came home to Kauai. I had this hope that one day I would have my own company. A conscious decision to leave the stage in pursuit of inspiring young dancers led her to open the Kauai Dance Center where, for the past 19 years, she has used her personal experiences to relate to her students. I really put myself in their shoes to understand what would be the most effective way to reach them and to develop their confidence in themselves. Uh, I would say that I was shy to be performing in front of people. I had never really done that before. She's very interactive. She likes to make sure you know what you're doing before she continues. She will reposition your body so that you feel what it's like to do the move correctly. She hopes dance has a positive impact on their lives as it does on hers. It's been a privilege to teach my students and be involved in my students' lives and watch them grow. You help someone strategize to bring out the best in themselves because the performance, boom, it's over. But the memory of it, that can last your lifetime. This is Shade Thomas from Kapa'a Middle School for Hiki No. People who face adversity will often find their truth in a higher power. Such is the case in this story from Kamehameha School's Maui Middle about a counselor in a wheelchair. Okay, what do we experience in life that makes us stronger? My passion in life is working with students, being able to find ways that I can still help the community because when I first got injured, the community really helped me. Michael Tom is a local boy who had everything going for him until that one fateful day back in 1990. I had my accident when I was 21 years old. It happened when I was surfing at Baldwin Beach Park. I went up on a wave and I came down head first and the power of the wave pushed me down. I broke cervical vertebrae in my neck at the C5 level and I was instantly paralyzed. After many years of recovering from his accident, Mr. Tom has found his calling in life by becoming a school counselor and supporting students. As time went on, I guess, I started to realize that this was a little more permanent than I realized. And I think the turning point came when I was really able to question God and to kind of be angry with God. And I realized that no matter what I did or said, that God would still be with me. I overcame my challenges mainly by making conscious decisions to either give up, to give up on what I wanted to do or to be able to use those challenges as springboards for learning new things, improving who I was as a person, and going forward from there. And I think that really, mending that relationship with God really gave me the strength and the optimism that I needed in order to move forward with my life, to be able to look at things differently. And then... Through all of his experiences, Mr. Tom has some advice for the youth of today. I think it's difficult for students nowadays because things are come really quickly, instantly. It's hard to look long term to be able to work towards your goals and continue with that. Um, I would say to never give up and to be able to endure and overcome your challenges. To look at challenges as a way to grow rather than as roadblocks. People may look at individuals in wheelchairs as being disabled, but Mr. Tom sees things from a different angle as he rolls on through life. This is Amai Genovia from Kamehameha School's Maui for Hikino. Sometimes a family business can reveal the truth about a young person's aspirations and entrepreneurial spirit. Here's a story from Waianae High School on Oahu about a son's destiny to carry on his parents' pig farm. <laughs> Feeding the pigs, you know, killing, cleaning for customers when they come purchase. You gotta cut their ears, their teeth, give them their injections. Kind of like raising, raising your child itself. Our pig is known as Ray's Hog Farm, and it's located on 
Parker Road. We have two lots there and we raise a lot of pigs there. Matthew Reyes leaves for work to Miley Wainai with his family every day. Pigs are just like humans, you know, they gotta, they gotta eat and drink every day. Um, the pigs, they can't feed themselves, you know, they're locked up in a cage. I didn't really have time to do much in my life, but all that I can remember is work, you know, work and get up and work, go to school, work. They give me a lot of chances to go out, you know, and stuff, but it's one reason why I kind of not wanted to go out, because I know my parents would need help too. Despite the endless hours put in, during the end of 2016, the farm faced heavy competition. After a while, you know, business got slow and we lost a lot of our customers because um, the demand wasn't as large as it was before. According to the 2014 data collected from the State of Hawaii Department of Agriculture, Reyes Hog Farm competes with 70 other pig farms on Oahu, a fraction of the 200 found statewide. A lot of people is getting involved and new farms are coming up, so it's, it's easier to get pigs anywhere now. It took a toll because it jeopardized our properties, you know, I mean, we could have lost everything because we didn't have income coming in, so we had to um, find ways, you know, to hustle. For these hard times, Matthew and his family tried their best to regain people's interest. How we gained a lot of customers was we dropped our prices on the pigs, you know, so like a lot of customers would come because we were, we we're a little cheaper than the other farms. So it was better that we lost a little money than lose everything, you know. I had to grow up really fast. I had to stand like a father figure to my siblings. Go down that side, help mom. Go stand on this side. As a role model, Matthew plans on furthering his education to pave the way for the future of the farm. I am planning on going to college, maybe just for a few years, get maybe a business degree. I just want to go and go a little bit deeper into business to, so I, and for my better understanding. And also, I want to take over the business because we had it for a long time. So I want to. I want to keep it in the family and continue it. Uh, it's not I have to do this. Um, I really want to do this because like this is my this is my life, you know, my livelihood, and it wouldn't make sense if I do anything else because I already know almost everything about pig farming. Um, I'm just gonna keep myself motivated and positive, you know. Even when times get hard, I'm just gonna keep pushing myself to be successful. This is Elizabeth Ufi from Waianae High School for Hiki No. Unfortunately. There are times when a traumatic experience, such as war, can shape a person's truth. This story from Kapa'a High School on Kauai explores the truth about one man's struggle with PTSD. My bullet hole, and the bullet just instead of already in my chest, when hit my elbow that I, when I moved away. So that was lucky, it went right in my fuel tank. But all our helicopters, they were all shot up. Psychological warfare. When Mr. Bobby Pike was a young man, the 17 months he served in the Vietnam War changed his life and the lives of his loved ones. This is my helicopter. So I didn't know what PTSD meant. Uh, so when I was going through all this, there was something new to me. Well, my family, I could hear them talking about me, about you know not hanging around with anybody. It kind of was kind of hard, you know, with a lot of people around. After a while, you know, we knew something was not right, the way he was acting, and um, we just let him, let him alone until he offered to come out and talk to us. Mr. Pike saved many lives when his unit was attacked, but survival left a deep scar that no honor could heal. I didn't want to Purple Heart because 22 guys killed the people I went to Vietnam with. And, you know, we, I stayed with them for like six months in that company. So it's kind of hard, you know, I get in a Purple Heart and my friend from Maui, he went home in a box. Struggling with the return to normal life, Mr. Pike found different ways to adjust with the support of his family and friends back home on Kauai. I was going to these meetings every week for years. He learned how to cope with these things. First with medication, and then I kind of over the medication stuff. So I go to the acupuncture, and they, they would, when you get paranoid, you know, irritated like that, they, they can handle that. I have a group of uh, Vietnam vets that I, I grew up with anyway, and we talk about 
things that I don't talk to anybody, just between us. He's able to bring out the best in people around him, make everybody feel comfortable, always willing to help. Regaining the ability to open up to others was important, but Mr. Pike also found peace alone under the hood with a wrench in his hand. I keep myself busy working on machines, on cars, old cars and stuff like that. It's kind of nice, you finish one car, you, you did it yourself, you know, hardly any help. You paint everything, you fix everything yourself rather than pay somebody to do anything. Mr. Pike still lives with the trauma of what happened decades ago, but... It's getting better now. I guess I'm getting used to all this. He served his country well, and uh, he loves his family, and so we were just happy that he returned home safely, you know, in one piece. This is Angelina Terrazas from Kapa'a High School for Hikino. Our next story shows that when video is used to present the truth of a person's situation, it can undo misperceptions and bring people together. From Chiefess Kamaka Helen Middle School on Kauai, here is Ethan Tevis. They just were more hesitant to like approach him. So just the, um, the looks, you know, in the cafeteria. Ethan Tevis was born with Soto syndrome a rare genetic disorder characterized by excessive physical growth for the first year of his life. It affects his appearance, movement, behavior, and his speech. I knew him when he was in his mom's stomach. Um, my connection, we have no blood relation, but I would consider him my cousin. I found out later on that people were giving him a hard time and felt kind of sad because he doesn't deserve that. Even the simplest tasks are hard for Ethan. So to help him cope with his disability, Ethan attends special sessions after school to practice his motor skills. He goes to these extra programs to be able to speak and be able to have a conversation with his classmates so that he can understand what they're saying. Students didn't know how to really approach him. Um, kind of at the beginning of the school year. So I think some Students weren't very used to him. Since it was Disability Month, Ethan's mother, Miss Jennifer Tevis, asked Colton Guzman to make a video for Ethan, explaining what he normally goes through in his daily life to show to his classmates. I give um, Colton a lot of footage, you know, pictures from when he was a baby and a lot of videos. He really compressed it into a nice video that was a learning video as well. He was born with Soto syndrome, which affects his development, so it takes him a long time to do what you can do. After watching the video, Ethan's classmates better understood what Ethan goes through, and they started getting to know him. His teacher, Miss Shannon Kaku, could see Ethan's classmates had a change on their perspective on him. Because they knew how to communicate with him, and that they were more aware of him. We were classmates in the beginning, and then by the end, we were just, we were just a big third grade family. Kids are really friendly, and they're all coming towards him. You know, and even when I visited the school as well, you know, everyone was... There was, no, there was no hesitancy anymore. They were all like, like he was like everybody else. They're able to see a side of Ethan that they can't see at school. After watching the video, the kids learned just how important it is to understand others before judging them. They knew that it was, you know, very challenging to be someone with special needs. If you just get to know someone on your own, it's a better connection, it's a deeper friendship, it's a stronger relationship. And I think that's important in life. This is Taika Jihara from Chief of Kamakahili Middle School for Hikino. Our final story reflects the truth of those in my generation who are deeply concerned that we are experiencing life through the barriers of our screens. I'm proud to present The Bigger Picture by my fellow Hikino storytellers at Kauai High School. Out of the 7 billion people living in this world, more than 4 billion own a cell phone. Look at us, thinking we have the whole world in our hands. We think we're capturing the moment when in reality, we are blind. 
On average, people check their phones 100 times a day. But one who is addicted to their phone will check it more than 900 times a day. Remember as kids, when we didn't focus on videotaping our every adventure and posing for a picture? Our phones distract us from the real beauty right in front of us, which makes each minute less memorable. We had an expansion of imagination greater than what a phone holds. We focus solely on that tiny screen, trying to capture every single moment we fail to witness. Put down your phones and cherish what is around you. We are surrounded by some of the most beautiful creations. So capture with your eyes and replay in your mind because you never get the same moment twice. It's a beautiful world, can't you see? Not through a screen or virtual reality. We are free. This world is given for us to see. Embrace what is beyond the screen and enjoy the bigger picture. This is Tiffany Seguccio and Brandon Marcos from Kauai High School for Hikino. We hope you've enjoyed watching these outstanding Hikino stories from the fall quarter of the 2017-2018 school year. The truth that they reveal about the people featured in them is more honest and heartfelt than anything a screenwriter of fictional films could invent. At its best, Hikino is not only about factual truth, it is also about the truth that lives inside each and every one of us. The fact that Hikino students are able to tap into and express that truth is yet another example of how Hawaii's young people, Hikino, can do. Broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.